Hello everyone, this is Studio Life, I'm Faith Gonna Be Sutley and we are back with another video. I'm a mixed media special effects artist that has been doing this professionally for a really long time and on this channel hopefully I can enlighten people to new and various ways of doing things to show you that nothing is impossible if you never limit yourself and you're not afraid to play. So welcome to all those viewing my stuff for the first time and shout outs of love and hugs to all of those returning um, to follow me on my lit art journey and see what I'm on about this time. Now, what are we doing? Ta-da! Shark Tooth in a Box is back. We've not seen this piece for a red hot moment because I've been working on commission stuff. This is not a commission, this is one of my own paintings and trust in the look that you guys can see hopefully that it is now starting to separate from the rest of the canvas. Now, hmm, I need to touch on a couple of things before we get started. We're going to be delving into the meat and potatoes of 3Ding this piece up today with a major couple of steps. So, um, before we begin, I just, I really need to apologise. <laughs> My last video, I was so knackered, it was not even funny, and even when I edited it, um, try saying that five times fast, I was thinking are you drunk uh seriously because i kept calling molding paste wood fill and i omitted a couple of key points that i started to tell you guys about and then just wandered off into the nether walls so wow um yeah i am a professional trust me <laughs> i wasn't then uh so today i want to clear up a couple of points and then we're going to just dive into this puppy right here because we're only doing a couple of things but the major steps so you might notice as well, this thing's got a little bit of the wobbles, and that is because, I can do this without banging the camera, it's wired. So, we've got the eyelets and everything on the back, so yeah, it's going to wobble about, it's not going to sit flat. Now, in my last video, and I'm going to just see if I can't do this without completely knocking this all over the place. This is a commission piece I was working on. As you can see, I've still got this bit down here to sand. This is wood fill. That is wood fill. Um, when you sand it, the powder goes all over the place. And when it's really, really hot, especially, it gets in your lungs. It makes you choke. Otherwise, this video was supposed to have been up yesterday. Um, and it's actually quite late in the day. So I will inbox you guys when this video is up. But a lot of you will be watching it in the morning. Um, unless you've bored out your gourd tonight. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but on this commission piece... I've also still got to fiddle about with the roses. I wanted to get the sanding done so I could brush all the powder off, give it a little wipe down, and that way I'm moving on to, to doing, um, finishing the petals on the rose and the plaque and the ribbon without molding paste powder being like ingrained right into it. So basically, one of my subscribers pointed out to me, thank you Calvin, um, that I did not clarify something with what I was doing. Started off here, I'm working on three petals. The reason I'm working on three petals at a time is because when you put something on um, a piece to build up a layer and it completely obliterates your detail, you don't want to do the whole thing at once otherwise you're gonna have just like a big grey or white or whatever colour blob and you're not gonna be able to tell what you're, what you're doing, what you're on about. So, I'm doing three petals at a time. This petal has clay on it. This one, I did in the last video, it's got molding, paste, and spackle mixed together. This one has got spackle. Why the difference? This was the start. This was the first step, what we did. This, was, this is the second step. Now, this petal already had, and I omitted to say this, it already had the wood, the, uh, don't do that, Faith. It already had the um, molding paste and the spackle mixed up and put on this. Before I put this layer of spackle on, forgot to tell you guys that. So you're probably scratching your heads going, what is she doing? Um, so this is the first step. This is the second step. This is the third step. So clay came first, molding paste and spackle mixed together. And then spackle. The reason we did 
I'm putting on the molding paste and the spackle together is it gives a softer look because I try to paint things by how they feel not just by what they look like flowers are soft so but then in this third step we need to bring in a little more detail and sort of build up a layer and then we'll go back to something soft again after I do maybe a couple of layers of spackle okay so I'm hoping that clears that lot up now the other thing that I omitted to finish my train of thought is and if you hear me choke if you hear me cough at all today it's because of the um the wood fill that's why it's taking a while to get rid of these videos because my throat i don't know if you can hear it I kind of catch myself um i started talking to you about test canvases and then my train of thought just went <clears throat> um why do we use test canvases we use test canvases so we don't muck up our paintings so I can't emphasize this enough. Like if you're in the, in the middle of a painting and you're not sure about a color, dad's clock. Uh, <laughs> hi dad. You need to subscribe, dude. Um, <laughs> wow. If you're in the middle of a painting and you're not sure about a color, if you're not sure about a texture, if you're not sure about um, how one thing is gonna mix with another paint that you've already got on there, that is why we use test canvases. And I do them all the time. Let me show you. Do, 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 do. This messy looking thing is a test canvas. And if, you, if, you, if your test canvas gets so messy that you can't tell what you're doing, label things. <laughs> like, I can't emphasize that enough. Label things. Like which is what? That way you're not gonna go back and go, okay, which swatch was what? What am I doing? Um. So, I would rather mock up on a test canvas than get halfway through a painting and put something on there and go, oh, wow, that looks awful, or it totally changed the color of the paint I already had on it, or something, or it's not what I was hoping for. Use test canvases. Now, on these, I've got little swatches all over the place. Let me show you this again. With stuff I mix so that I know what it does what it works well with and what I can use and if I can paint over top of it thing is like that um sometimes that takes me half a day just to go through swatches and go okay well this is the color I'm looking for or this is the texture I need you mix stuff don't be afraid to play if you get something a special kind of paint and you think that that looks really cool what would that do don't slap it on your painting straight away. Don't wreck a good canvas. Like, even if you're just starting and you're going to just slap that on there, what if it does something funky? What if it doesn't stick? What if it comes off in pieces? You know? What if it doesn't mix well with the other paint you're going to use? Try your test canvases, please. Thank you. It's a, it's a more expensive way of doing it, but it will save you in the long run because, you know, you're not going to muck up a commission piece. Or something you're trying to sell. Now, all that blithering aside, um, we are on to crumb, sharp tooth in a box. Now you might notice I've still got a glitch over here. I'm not covering that up because I don't want to slap paint on there and then try and put another layer of clay on top of it. It's not going to sit as well. So we are using today, if I can get the lid to stay on it, this is the villain from the last video that I kept calling wood, I kept calling molding paste. Um, or the other way around, but I kept calling molding paste wood filler. So this is actual wood filler. And I've got to get some more because a lot of that has dried up on me. I just got a wee bit in the bottom. So I do have to get some more of that. Uh, okay, and we are also using actual molding paste who knew right yay so golden molding paste um so i'm going to set these aside before i do something completely funky out my way now bump the camera where would we be if i didn't do that right uh we're using some water we are using some things called 
shot glasses, plastic shot glasses. These things come in handy for small amounts of paint. For big amounts of paint or washes, I use frisbees because they're like deep. They're plastic, you can wash them well. Just use um, a bit of ivory dish soap or SOS pads or both if it's like oil paint is really stubborn, something like that. So, um, yeah, a bit of shot glass, a bit of a shot glass. Oh, they are tiny. And molding paste and wood fill. Now, we've done wood fill and water on here before. This is what this is. You want to see how I did that? There is two playlists with this painting on it. One is Andrew's Gift and the other one is just plain shark teeth in a box. Um, you go back and check that out if you want to. Now the first step we're going to be doing, we're going to do this first. We're going to do the molding paste. And you're like, that doesn't look like molding paste. Yep, it is. We are taking, and I've already done this so I can get the consistency that I want. We are taking your, a really small paintbrush. If possible, try and buy Taclin paintbrushes. They are the best. Um, Michael sells them. Amazon sells them. The dollar shops sell cheap versions of these. Be careful. They do work in a pinch. Um, but these are a little more expensive. But they've got a rub rubber handle. They don't shed. They're really tiny. You can get into places that you can't otherwise get. There goes my voice. Thank you, wood filler. So we've taken some molding paste and we put it in a shot glass with about that much water. Only that much water. Because we want to make sort of a paste. We still want it to be slightly translucent. And you're like, well, that is not, that can't be molding paste. That's great. Molding paste isn't that great. Well, it is if you add one drop of FW ink black. Only one. Little goes a long way. Now, where's the little sucker what I just had? Here we go. So you've got your molding paste. You've got a little bit of water, like I said, that much. And one drop of your black acrylic FW ink. Now, you want it sort of thick. Can you see that that's, that's kind of thick? We're going to wipe off a bit of it. Now there's a specific place we're going to put this and I'm checking the camera. Try, even though we want that this is, um, Slightly translucent. Slightly. Try to keep your lines. And the thing I want to tell you as well, which I omitted to tell you, and I'm a bit of a goofball for that. I went over the detail and added a wee bit of detail again with a permanent black marker. Sharpie. Okay. Before I did all this. I didn't use paint. I didn't go over it with paint. I wanted sort of a soft look. So I went back with the marker. Now, what am I on about? And if you don't get the effect that you want, oh, go crocky my voice. I've got a bottle of water over there. I'm probably going to need it. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. When you start to add color of any sort, it starts to change things all. Up. 
and we have to do a lot of a lot of the layering process before we can get into painting. Please excuse my voice, it is bloody rubbish. Now we're literally going to take a little bit of this down into this Just a little bit. I'm hoping you can see what I'm on about. Can you see? Okay, looks like a big mouth at the minute, doesn't it? <coughs> Sorry about that. So I'm going to set that aside. What is the next thing we're going to do before I get into a coughing fit I can't come back from? Um, we are working with wood fill at the moment. Now, if you'll notice, this looks quite thick. When you are done with this, this should sort of be the consistency of toothpaste. Mushy, but definitely the consistency of toothpaste. So, and you know how well that stuff does with water, it just sort of like disintegrates, right? So what you want, again, in this shot glass, is about that much water, that much water. And you're like, well that's a lot of stuff. Well yeah, it's mostly wood fill. That much water and wood fill. Don't put no paint in it, nothing like that at all. Okay. Taking another small brush. And look how thick that is. Show you. Look how thick that is. That's sort of like the consistency of warm toothpaste. Okay. So. <clears throat> Oops. And the reason we want it a little thicker is because we are building. And again, try to leave some of your lines. You can go over the outside edge just a little bit. And I've got to be careful because Logan is banging on his cage. He wants out. And I don't really. 
really think you guys want to hear him caterwauling. <laughs> Now once this is dry, I might decide to go over it again. Some of this will show through and that's great. I'm going to go back up here and show you a bit of this. We want, up here we want like a, a, a curved sort of downward trajectory. Because that's going to help influence where a paint goes later on. And also help make this look more real. Once I get this bit done, This half I will fain off and uh, leave you guys to have a great night. Try not to get, until this dries, try not to get any of your wood filler in your molding paste. Yay, I said it. Again, downward trajectory. That's not easy to say, by the way. Now, I'm probably going to have to order some more wood fill before I go doing any more steps with this chart there. Yes, Logan. We can all hear you. Mommy will let you out in a moment. I put him in the cage because he gets rather antsy when I do videos. And I don't want to have to keep chasing him. Now, we're going to take just a little bit and just put it in a couple of places on top of the marker makes it sort of look like it's going back in like in a shelf type thing so and once this is dry, where we put that little bit of, of um, wood fill, we will go over this piece here. Wood fill, I did it again, dear lord, help me. Um, <laughs> molding paste! <sighs> Believe me, I know what I'm doing, trust me. Um, my mouth just doesn't want to cooperate. Where we put that little bit of, of um, molding paste along here, the little bit of the grey, we're going to go over that once this is all dry with the wood fill 
If I had one of those things, I would pop up a big sign with letters saying Woodfield with an arrow pointing to the... Yeah. Um, clearly, I need more sleep. So, I'm hoping you can see what I've done here so far. And when I'm all done with this and I've got maybe another layer on here, um, I will post a photograph to Facebook. And we are at 25 minutes. Hopefully you guys get something out of this video or any of the videos what I do. If um, you enjoy my content, by all means, please consider subscribing uh, and liking the video. Because uh, a little bit of love goes a long way on YouTube with the algorithms and whatever. And more people get to see the video that way. And who knows, maybe I can give somebody some ideas as to something different they can muck about with. So you guys take care and we will see you on Saturday. Love and hugs. Bye-bye.